all my videos are very practical. <coughs> uh, no focus or not so much focus on theory. Of course there must be a focus on theory, otherwise you cannot make uh, electronic circuits or whatever. And here is the power supply that I, that I was working on in the past, say approximately uh, three months ago or so, perhaps even five months. And the only thing that I want to show is that this um, power supply has parasitic oscillations. Has everything, of course, to do with the sloppy wiring here inside. You can see it surely everywhere there's wiring. It's a kind of hay wire circuit, though, uh, in fact, on DC it could be, not always, but it could be uh, that it is no problem. Though it is always a kind of problem uh, when we have, say, transistors used in such a circuit. And in the past I have made this circuit with a MOSFET and it started to oscillate and my, say, uh, second idea was make it with some uh, classical silicon power transistors. And that was done here. I made it with uh, Darlington consisting of two high voltage transistors, both NPN. They form a Darlington. Uh, one of these transistors is the BUT11AF and the other one is named the S2000A. Here you can see it. As far as I know it's a high voltage uh, NPN silicon transistor made uh, 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 ori originally to drive a coil in a classic old school analog TV unit, etc. etc. Uh, well, uh, I used it, it had an amplification factor of approximately 5. I've tested that, and here is the other transistor. It's kind of immersed in silicon kit, but anyway. This forms a Darlington. Here is the completely sloppy wiring that is, in my opinion, responsible for the problem that I want to show. Anyway, uh, so this is the schematic oscillation problems in a sloppy wired power supply. These are the used transistors. You can surely use them. No problem with that. And when you make, say, a kind of neat way um, to mount all the transistors, etc., etc., preventing that this oscillation problem can pop up anyway, it can always pop up. So, uh, this is the schematic here that I've made. It works properly apart from that oscillation problem. And I will show how it uh, works out in practice. This is the load. Uh, a few um, 12 volt, volt um, automotive lamps in series. They were in other videos on my YouTube channel. And let's see what happens. The scope is of course uh, the only instrument that you can use in these cases. I'm going now to lift up the output voltage and let's see. Uh, the output voltage is by the way going tr to these incandescent lamps 
and let's see what happens. So here we have the knob that does the job here. Setting the voltage and of course the current. Uh, that say panel is now moved moved down to the uh, here. And I will now say lift up the voltage and let's see what happens. So here on this moment of say driving the power transistor there is oscillation. And that's of course very very bad. In a power supply there must be no oscillations whatever. Perhaps I can reproduce it. You can surely see that on a certain moment on when the potentiometer is on a certain part on the carbon layer and that's very precise there's oscillation. That's bad. So I have to cure that um, and there are some ways to cure that, more or less experimental ways. Uh, of course I have to test that anyway. Uh, a good way to prevent these oscillations, of course I don't know where they come from. That's the first important thing. I have to do more study. But I only want to show now some, say, classical um, rule of thumb kind of ways to prevent oscillations. So it could be that there is back coupling from the output to the input, etc., etc., or here from the emitter to the base, or here emitter to the base. And a good idea could be to uh, connect here out of the base a hundred nanofarad capacitor to ground. And also here exactly the same. Though there is a 2.2 microfarad capacitor here that acts as a kind of way to uh, drop down the uh, hum. So this is the way that this is made. So uh, here we have that situation uh, to drop down the hum, but anyway, small capacitors in the range of 100 nanofarad, 15 nanofarad can do such a job. Perhaps from the base to ground, perhaps here from the base to ground, of course that will not have a big effect because there's already a 2.2 microfarad capacitor and furthermore do your experiments. Perhaps even from emitter to collector a small capacitor of 100 nanofarad can work um, from the uh, here from the collector uh, a small capacitor can work and perhaps in the future I will give more tips. The most important thing is of course where does this oscillation come from. In fact I don't know at the moment. It has everything to do with say all kinds of capacitances here between all these wirings that are made in a far too sloppy way. So not a, a very well uh, sought out way of um, wiring an electronic circuit. And the good thing or the bad thing about it is that uh, I at first made this circuit with a MOSFET and I had an extreme oscillation. So now with the 
normal say, silicon transistors, power silicon transistors, the oscillation was uh, substantially diminished. But uh, say it's still there. So uh, I want to make another video where I have solved this problem. Only want to pen over somewhat about the circuit that I made. It works in fact very properly. It's a simple voltage regulator made with two transistors here. And when you make the wiring not so sloppy, I'm more or less sure that you will not encounter this problem. So, again, perhaps this is interesting. Though, of course, uh, to prevent oscillations, well, uh, use the tips that I've given in this video to prevent it or make such a circuit in not such a sloppy way that I have made it. Well, let's look what this uh, circuit can bring. That could also be interesting. Uh, here is the load. A few automotive car lamps. And they work properly. I give the supply now more, more voltage. And you can surely see that it works. The whole circuit works properly. Though there is the oscillation problem that's not fit, not visible, by the way, when you do this experiment. But when you have, say, an audio amplifier and you want to supply your audio amplifier with this power supply, you will surely meet the problem of, say, parasitic oscillations traveling on the power supply lead, uh, say, the positive power supply lead, uh, negative, etc, etc. No problem with that. That will more or less be the same. So this works properly. And I will give now the circuit its maximum output. That's also an issue. I only have one hand, so anyway. I bridge now the protective resistors. And we have a lot of power here at the same time. The say output amperes goes up, output uh, current goes up. Say we have a 75 volts at approximately 2 ampere. That's a lot. But of course uh, this power supply cannot withstand that for a very long time. So. Say you can use this setup for a few minutes or so. And that's the reason my camera drops. Sorry for that. That, uh, well, this is the protection resistor here. But it was not all about all the properties of these, this uh, unit. I want to give more information in the next video. It's, this will be a vlog. So, thanks for watching.